Welcome back to the second installment of the Grand Clark Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Again, a brand new digs. Last week from the weight room, but this week, you can talk about some good food. The Biggie Burger. Right here, we're at Biggie's Clam Bar on Stone Drive, right across the putt putt here in Kingsport. And Coach Clark, you're good friends with these folks. And uh, hey, they can put out some serious grub sweet potato fries and sweet tea and burgers. It's good stuff. You name it, whatever they put out's good stuff. And we're going to do some pregame meals here this year. They do lasagna for 100. And for me, that's probably 50. <laughs> um, they do uh, baked spaghetti for uh, large groups, and they cater it out, and it is absolutely fabulous. And, you know, certain nights of the week, they have a little dancing going on here. I, I, I'm glad they don't tonight because, you know me, once I get started dancing, I'm bad to dance a while. All night long. Plus, I've got my Garth Brooks gear on here. I'm <laughs> not breaking into a country tune anyway. Let me just say this. We get ready for the show each week. He says, do we have to wear this thing? And he says something about looking like Richard Simmons with his little workout mic. I said, Coach, I don't like it either, but this is what our tech man said to wear. So here we be. We're at Biggie's again. And don't forget, on Tuesdays, it's two for one. So the burgers we're talking about and the pizza and the chicken sandwiches every Tuesday, two for the price of one. You can't beat that. If you are looking for some great food to uh, beat a budget, two for one. Burgers, pizza, and chicken sandwiches every Tuesday here at Biggie's Clam Bar on Stone Drive here in Kingsport. Coach, first game of the season, tough place to go, hot, muggy night last week, and Indians responded well, getting a big win on the road. You know, predicted storms. I got over there, really, for an opening night. It was a pretty nice night. It was, it was warm. It was warm. It would have been warm just from the fumes coming off the speed track. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Thursday night, uh, Tried to um, get over there and not spend as much time outside or inside as possible because uh, there's no air conditioning underneath the stone castle. And um, tried to get over there and just kind of get ready and put our clothes on and go to work. I thought our guys handled it very well. It's a different routine for them, a uh, different routine. Of course, we're so young, I guess maybe they'll think that is the routine right now. But... Uh, I thought we came out a little bit of jitters, five-yard penalty right there at the start, three and out. And then we scored the next six times we had the ball. Uh, there was a series there where, uh, and you'll see some of it on highlights. I won't show you theirs. But there was a series where they go 78 yards for a touchdown, kick extra point, kick off. We go 74 yards for a touchdown, kick the extra point. Uh, they fumbled the first play. We recovered in a, in a series of about two minutes. There's, uh, let me get my higher level math going here, 17 <laughs> points scored there. Touchdown and field goal for us, touchdown for them. So uh, that got us a little lead because it was 21 to 14. Uh, outstanding running back for them, Sir Chef. Uh, I think rushed for over 100 yards. He did. Blake Rogers over 100 for us. Jacoby Thompson, a 75-yard rushing night. Cole Maupin, nine for 14 passing, uh, 135 yards. Very efficient. Uh, and then defensively, uh, uh, Jacob Roller was our leading tackler. Dawson Pearson, big old sophomore defensive tackle, and Bryce Barrett. And here's another thing, Tom, and, and you, you know because you've been around me long enough. Bryce Barrett got us 122 yards on special teams. That's 12 first downs that the offense doesn't have to get. Landon Sayers put six kickoffs in the end zone. That starts them out on the 20-yard line. I remember sitting and talking to Coach Bryant in his office. And for you youngsters out there, that would be Coach Bear Bryant. <laughs> uh, and uh, sitting in his office and him saying, you know, we won a national championship in 1970." eight and we had one touchdown drive of over 50 yards because you get to play 10 somebody's fixing to make a mistake so if they can kick that ball back to the 20 yard line it makes it tough to score and uh, you always remember that you know he said somebody's fixing to make a mistake after play 10 it might be me it might be a player it might be an official so Landon Sayers starting them off on the 20 yard line every time was big and Bryce Barrett's 12 first downs on special teams was big. Real big. And they go on the road to win 45-14. to 14, The final score, Indians get the big W on the road to the Stone Castle. Back home Friday night for their home opener against the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Tonight's show, by the way, being brought to you by Hayworth Tire, Orthopedics of Kingsport, 
Southern Dwelling with our buddy Diane Hills, and also uh, Cross Country, More Than a Mortgage with our buddy Russell Street. Of course, we're here at Biggie's Clam Bar on Stone Drive right across the putt pup. And again, don't forget on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 6 to 8, Half Price Raw Bar. That would be oysters, clam, shrimp cocktail, half price, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from 6 until 8 here at Biggie's Clam Bar, again on Stone Drive across from the Putt-Putt. Very easy to find. Just look for the crowd. Always a good crowd, good crowd in here tonight while we're taping this show. It comes out on Wednesdays at noon, and you can find it on YouTube, Tom Taylor Sports. Just that easy. And so we'll be doing this every Tuesday night. So for future reference, come on by and have dinner with us and hang out with us and get some great food here at Biggie's. Quick break. We'll be right back. We'll look at the highlights of the big win over the Tennessee High Vikings as we roll on here from Biggie's Clam Bar in Kingsport. You're watching, listening to the Graham Clark Coaches Show. If you are buying a home or a current homeowner and just curious about what your refinancing options are, I invite you to call me today. Hi, I'm Russell Street, branch manager for Cross Country Mortgage Incorporated in Kingsport. If you are thinking about financing a home and you don't know what you qualify for, I can help you with no obligations. At Cross Country Mortgage, we work closely with all of our customers from start to finish. Let me put my years of experience to work for you for all of your home financing needs. Visit us again at Cross Country Mortgage at 505 East Center Street in Kingsport. You can call us today at 423-246. 2126. That's 423 246 2126. Or visit us at www.crosscountrykpt.com. I can help you with your pre qualification today. Cross Country Mortgage Inc. License number NMLS 3029. Kingsport Branch NMLS 855512. Russell Street NMLS 148950. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details. Equal housing opportunity lender. To verify licensing, visit www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Back at Big East, thank you for being with us. The Grand Park Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Week number two coming up against the Oak Ridge Wildcats. We'll talk about that coming up in a moment. Rankings are out this week. Science Hill, Dobbins Minutes 6A are there. And the rankings also, Oak Ridge is there. We'll talk about that as well. Big test for the Indians, the Wildcats coming to town. But first, Coach, let's go back and capture the first half highlights. Again, there's a lot of youngins doing a lot of good things last Friday night, or last Thursday night, I should say, in the Stone Castle. And we deferred the opening kickoff, so our defense was on the field first. Uh, first down, very first play. Well, you like to get started off like this. Chris Moore, Jacob Rower, and Dawson Pearson. Uh, gain of zero. Our defense gave up a first down. Offense three and out. Defense back on on the field, second and six. Dawson Pearson, Michael Dean, Jacob Rower again. Gain of zero. Uh, nice pass breakup by Quentin Polanski. Quentin back second year as a starter, doing a great job. And then fourth down and six. Big punt return. Bryce Barrett picks up two first downs. Great way to get the offense started. Third down and three. Great catch by Elijah Dunn. Uh, Cole Mop, and I'm not sure I wanted him to throw that ball, but he did, and uh, it worked out. Then a 24-yard run by Cole Mop and quarterback. Got a nice trap block by Grayson Castle. Grayson, big old offensive senior guard there. Third down and three. Cole Mop and the sophomore Jacob Strange. Jacob, uh, I'll be honest, I thought Co I, I didn't see Jacob get put in the game. We threw the pass. He caught it. He took it in. Kobe Gladson with a big block. And then a kickoff in the zone by Landon Sayers give them the ball on the 20-yard line. Josh Rapkin, Ivan Phillips, two juniors, tackle for loss. So you, didn't, you don't get a lot of tackles for losses against a good offense. Bryce Barrett with a pass breakup on a great break, and they try and get down the field, and Bryce Barrett with another pass breakup. Bryce had two on the night along with eight tackles. Uh, Bryce Barrett, 43-yard punt return. If you look close, you can see two big blocks by James Buchanan and Quentin Polinski. All those first downs don't happen by themselves. Blake Rogers, 22-yard touchdown run. Uh, first touchdown run of the season for Blake. Blocks the touchdown by uh, Jordan Malone, Bradley Dorton, Tucker Hall, Michael Foster, and Elijah Dunn. Makes it 14 to nothing. Tennessee High uh, goes on a 10-play drive. Uh, then we go stops by Phillips, Roller, and Pearson. Negative two yards. Third down and two. Uh, Dawson Pearson, Jacoby Thompson, Martin Main, 
a tackle for zero. Should have run that defense again. They scored on the next play. Uh, Cole Maupin, a 17-yard run on second down and four. Cole Maupin to Kobe Gladson for 11, a huge third down pickup. And then another huge third down pickup, Maupin to Gladson. Uh, Jacoby Thompson's touchdown run made it 21 to seven. Tennessee High got a highlight of their own with a 78 yard touchdown run. You'll have to tune into their show. <laughs> and uh, one play later, Blake Rogers, 74 yard touchdown run. Not just like you drew it up, but a tremendous run by Blake Rogers. Fumble caused by Ben Foster, recovered by Chris Moore. And uh, we drive it down. We got it fourth down and two. I hate to not go for it that close, but a field goal by Landon Sayers makes it a three-score game, and sometimes you got to get that done right before halftime. Talking to Coach Clark again. We're here at Biggie's again, Clam Bar on the Stone Drive in Kingsport, the Graham Clark Coaches Show. Coach, it sounded in the highlights. Cole Maupin got better. Started out a little, you know, a little shaky by his own admission and your admission, but as he got into the flow, got much better and was really clicking and uh, had a heck of a night at quarterback. Well, you know, Cole, that first pass he threw looked like a bean squirting out of his fingers. <laughs> it went straight to the. It went straight to the ground. Uh, Y'all see me have to make my Garth Brooks adjustment there. I'm getting ready to sing a second verse. It went straight to the ground, and uh, I'm like, oh, man, no. Well, the second one he threw was a little bit late, a breakup, 0 for 2. And, boy, after that, he got hot. And, you know, he went 9 for 12 the rest of the night and threw it exceptionally well. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, you you go into this game, you think, you know, Skylar East was our quarterback all last year, had a great year, and Cole had some good runs, like I said, 53 yards rushing in addition to 135 passing. So, big night for him on the first night. Yeah, ran the, ran the offense very well, obviously. Again, the Indians get the big win, 45-14. We talked last week on our first show about the size of the Tennessee high line. Big old youngins up front, able to appear from what you're telling me. Indian, the Hogs got up there and kind of neutralized that somewhat. Well, I thought our offensive line did a nice job. Um, you know, we uh, – we managed to get some push. Uh, of course, I, I read those guys' names off to you. Jordan Malone, Bradley Dorton, Michael Foster, um, Tucker Hall, and, um, oh, gosh, I've gone blank here. Uh, who also had that other block to a touchdown? Uh, you know how Bear Bryant used to do that, don't you? I can't think of his name, but now he's a fine old boy. I remember that. He's got a good mama. His mama loved him. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... Um, you know, we, we got, oh, Grayson Castle, good Lord. Uh, uh, Grayson Castle. So those five guys had a good push for us all night. Carter Holt came in and played some tight end, and he did some good things. And we had nice blocking on the perimeter. Now, Tennessee High's offense had 320 yards. You know, they, they got two big old guards that uh, move well. And, uh, of course, I know Coach Mays will get them to improve every week. And uh, they'll, they'll be a good football team. And, and we're a good football team Thursday night. Tennessee High will move on this week and play at Solomon South. Of course, the Indians come back home, take on the ranked team, the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Talk more about that in a moment. Our show being brought to you by Hayworth Tire, Orthopedics of Kingsport, Southern Dwelling with our buddy Diane Hills, and also Cross Country Mortgage, more than a mortgage with our buddy Russell Street. Of course, we're here at Biggie's. And don't forget this weekend, uh, Coach talking about doing some dancing Friday night. He won't be dancing Friday night. He's got a football game, <laughs> Coach. The great... I hope I get to dance some Friday night <laughs> at the, the great, football game. The great disaster band will be here on Friday. Then on Saturday, the Well Dogs. And I was talking to Shane. Shane says these guys play a, just a different, all kinds of different types of music. So they'll be in here live at Biggie's on Saturday, the Well Dogs. And, Coach, 31-14 halftime. Give us the second half highlights. Tribes with victory over Tennessee High. Well, we start the second half off. Uh, Tennessee High kicks it off. And Bryce Barrett with a return to the 42-yard line. Obviously, we got to have some blocks there. Buried a 10-yard gain on a speed sweep. And um, Edward Newcomb had two great blocks out on the edge on that. Third down and eight. Cole Maupin to Elijah Dunn. Elijah called it. Touchdown pass. Uh, Elijah kind of looked at me and gave me a little wink, you little know, wink. and uh, knew what he wanted and made it 38-14. to 14. Uh, third down and one, Tennessee High stuffed. Jacob Roller, Devin Franklin, Logan Schaefer, James Buchanan. Uh, big play for us right there. And then a third down and six, Michael Nickens and Josh Rapkin on a huge play. Jacoby Thompson with a 23-yard run. 
scoots that thing out on the edge. Uh, Maupin to Comaupin to Carter Holt. Little pass down the middle. Little play action deal. Uh, second down and goal. Jacoby Thompson touchdown run behind uh, Jordan Malone, Tucker Hall, Grayson Castle, and then Blake Rogers had a great kickout block on that. 45 to 14. Logan Schaefer. Watch this. Nice little sophomore tackle for a loss. Second down and 11, Zach Roberts. Another sophomore tackle for a gain of zero. Uh, Reese Cornett, Michael Nickens. What, the big hit on this, though, was the blow-up by Isaiah Jane. Uh, he hit the quarterback, man. It's beautiful. Fourth down and four. Uh, we get him stopped. Uh, Devin Franklin with a tip on a pass ball, and Eric Lawson with the interception. And uh, we get uh, Logan Atwell, the professor in there, uh, that uh, breaks one for 16 yards and uh, finish up the game with a score of 45 to 14. That's how it ended the Stone Castle. Indians got the big win on the road. You are watching the Graham Clark Coaches Show. It'll be ready to go Wednesday at noon on YouTube. And just simply type in Tom Taylor Sports. You have already. We've had over 100 views in our first week. And we're very excited about that. Before we go to the break, let me run down the tail of the table one more time. Some numbers from, again, as Coach talked about earlier, but it's worth repeating. These kids had some great evening, or had a great evening uh, Thursday night. Uh, you have, I keep saying Thursday night. It was Thursday night. It was Thursday, it was Thursday night. night. I was, I was I was in speedway mode. Yep, Thursday night, same night as the Food City Race night. Downtown Bristol. Mopping 9 for 14. 64% of his passes were completed. That's a heck of a night. Two touchdown passes. Rushing the football. Again, you heard Rogers, six carries, 106 yards, right around an 18-yard average for a couple of touchdowns. Thompson, Jacoby, 13 carries, 72 yards, a four-and-a-half-yard average, a couple of touchdowns. Catching the football the other night. Dunn, four catches, a touchdown for a 12-and-a-half-yard average. How about Strange? One catch, Biggie. It was a 27-yard touchdown strike to get it going for the Tribe. Gladson, a couple of catches for 16-yard average. Jeffers and Holt each had a catch. And then uh, uh, rushing the football. Dobbins been at 281, passing 135. Total offense, 416, points scored, 45. For the defensive side of the football, Indians allowed 260 yards rushing, only 49 yards passing all night with the Tennessee high offense for a total of 309. Total yards given up with the Tribe's defense, 14 points allowed, as Coach said, and we wrap up the package, get on the bus, and come on back to the Model City with a big win. Impressive night, kicking the ball, impressive night. Uh, offensively, I thought our defense ran to the ball very well. Uh, I think we got to do a better job of tackling than what we did, and we're certainly going to work at it very hard this week. Um, sometimes tackling is a, is a, something that you're blessed with because you got those great quick feet, and sometimes you really have to work at it. And uh, we've got to work at it a little bit more, and we have this week. Let's recap the defensive side before we go to the break. Then coming up, we're going to recap the Big East Conference and set the schedule this week and obviously talk about the next opponent. It's a good one coming to town, the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Jacob Roller and James Buchanan, eight tackles each last uh, last Friday night, Thursday night. Bryce Barrett, seven tackles. Dawson Pearson, seven tackles. Again, Barrett, a couple of pass breakups. Uh, Michael Nickens, five tackles on the night. Chris Moore, four tackles and a fumble recovery. Also, the man who calls that, Ivan Phillips, four tackles, and he calls to fumble. And then, of course, we said Moore got the fumble for Dobbins' minute. You have Rodgers with four tackles, Chris Moore for, with four tackles, Josh Rapcam with four tackles on the night, uh, Brett Rogers with four tackles, and also a cause fumble. Jacoby Thompson and Martin Main with a, three tackles each, and Thompson also had a cause fumble. Uh, Polinski had a pass breakup, so did uh, Devin Franklin for Dobbins minute, and Eric Lawson had an INT for the uh, Rebel uh, uh, Indian defense, rather, not the Rebels. <laughs> That's who Tennessee High plays this week. It would be for the Indian defense, and so they win big at the Stone Castle, 45-14. to 14. Tennessee High does go to South and play the Rebels, and as we said, Tribe comes back home, home opener. Coming up Friday night against the Oak Ridge Wildcats. We'll talk about that and the Big East and all the Big Seven and everything going on with this week and last week as well, right after you hear this on the Graham Clark Coaches Show.
If you are buying a home or a current homeowner and just curious about what your refinancing options are, I invite you to call me today. Hi, I'm Russell Street, branch manager for Cross Country Mortgage Incorporated in Kingsport. If you are thinking about financing a home and you don't know what you qualify for, I can help you with no obligations. At Cross Country Mortgage, we work closely with all of our customers from start to finish. Let me put my years of experience to work for you for all of your home financing needs. Visit us again at Cross Country Mortgage at 505 East Center Street in Kingsport. You can call us today at 423-246-2126. That's 423-246-2126. Or visit us at www.crosscountrykpt.com. I can help you with your pre-qualification today. Cross Country Mortgage, Inc., license number NMLS 3029. Kingsport Branch, NMLS 855512. Russell Street, NMLS 148950. All loans subject to underwriting approval. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details. Equal housing opportunity lender. To verify licensing, visit www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Back at Biggie's Clam Bar again. Thanks for being with us. Grand Clark Coaches Show again. Wednesdays at noon. It comes on YouTube. Tom Taylor Sports there will be. And let's recap the Big East Conference of last week because it was opening week of high school football in the great state of Tennessee. Knox Beard, 50-7 win over the Carnes Beavers. Bradley Central starts off with a 34-27 win for Walker Valley. Jefferson County beat Knox Grace 48-21. Also, you had Hardin Valley losing on Thursday night to Knox West 16-15. Maribel, big win over Heritage, 57-19. That sets up the big showdown this Saturday night. It'll be Maribel against Fulton, number one team in 6A, the Rebels, number one team in 4A. Knox Fulton will play in Maribel on Saturday evening. Again, Maribel won 57-19. Our opponent coming up, Oak Ridge beat Clinton, 24-14. Sevier County future opponent, the Smoky Bears, disposed of Cleveland, 26-6. And uh, you had... Also, William Blunt over Lenore City, 24-20. So those are the football teams, of course, from last week, big week around northeast Tennessee. This week it goes like this. Bearden home against Powell. You have, of course, DB home against the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Jefferson County goes to Knox Carter. We mentioned Maryville and Fulton on Saturday. Bradley Central goes to McMinn County. Science Hill opens things up in Johnson City against the Elizabeth and Cyclones. Last week's opponents, we told you, Tennessee High plays at Sullivan South, and William Blunt will be at home against Alcoa. So that is the schedule for this week involving the teams that the Indians will play. And, Coach, let's, uh, again, talk about the Big East so far. Uh, again, flexing some muscles. The only team I can see that lost was Hardin Valley. Everybody else pretty strong showing coming out of the gate. Well, and – West is a good football team. You know, their their last year's, uh, let's see, what was it called last year? They would have been last year's 5A or 4A state champions uh, and, and had a number of guys coming back. Uh, a game that everybody that I've talked to said they thought Hardin Valley outplayed them, but uh, uh, a couple of special teams errors, like we talk about and talk about. Really surprised by the Bearden score because I know Carnes has a uh, receiver – uh, defensive player that is committed to Oklahoma State that we're going to try and build that offense around. And I'd heard some good things about their football team. So that was a little bit of a shocker. Uh, but uh, they, they've got a number of people back. Of course, they were 1-9 last year. Uh, future opponents, uh, let's see, what did we get there? William Blunt, win. Sevier County, win. Hardin Valley did not, but they played last year's 4A state champions. Maribel, win. Bradley Central, win. win. Jefferson uh, County. Jefferson County, win. Bearden, win. And Science Hill didn't play. So that's the good news. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's just go ahead and set us up a schedule where you know, there's no Boy Scout uh, 121 troops on the schedule or uh, uh, VFW uh, teams lined up. We've got a bunch of good football teams. Yes, you do. Hopefully – you know, we've got the focus of our team to, to, to compete with those people. And a good team comes this Friday night to Jay Fred Johnson Stadium. They're ready to go. Of course, that would be the Oak Ridge Wildcats, Atomic City against Model City. And, and they got a couple of youngins. got a lot of youngins, but two in particular that are going to go on. have already committed to play uh, on Saturdays next year in major college football. No, one of them's playing on Saturdays and the other one's back. <laughs> yeah. He rejected my offer. Thanks, T. Uh, <laughs> but we had some great nights. You, you know, Tom's the only guy that ever brought me a piece of Big Ed's pizza. You're Keep right. it in the press box for I me. I sure do. So after the game, I never had any. And we're, ta- we're here tonight for Big Ed's, so I'm not talking about Big Ed's anymore. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had some great nights, some great games down at Oak Ridge, great rivalry for many, many years. 
98 uh, 600 to win uh, that uh, we were down 14 to nothing and scored twice in 15 seconds and then ended up uh, uh, driving the ball the entire third quarter uh, and uh, you know they, it just goes on and on uh, the years and the great rivalries and the great games we had uh, down there with them had to go back there that year that actually the next game in the playoffs was the game that we had the ball the whole third quarter and uh, that was a tight, tight ball game. Uh, so, uh, Coach Gaddis, who was down there in those 90s, mm -hmm. uh, left and Bruce Lucier took over. And they've had two or three guys since then, but Coach Gaddis is back. And he's closed the fences around Oak Ridge and keeping everybody home and uh, doing a great job with them. And the two guys he's talking about, uh, Darrell Middleton, he will be going to Arizona State next year. He is a wide receiver tight end at 6'6", 255. Plays some defensive line. Last year was an all-state defensive lineman. And uh, then, of course, T. Higgins, who just Monday uh, announced that he's committing to the University of Tennessee. Now, you know, commitments nowadays in college, you know, they, they can waver. But from what I understand, those guys are pretty strong in their commitments. And, uh, you know, Tennessee and Arizona State, they play pretty good football. Not bad. Uh, so they obviously see something in those two young men. Uh, uh, running back uh, that's back that was their leading rusher last year, T.J. Allison, rushed for uh, 900 yards. And uh, I think uh, Jared Verner, the only starter in their offensive line. So he's a center, very similar to us with Michael Foster. Uh, they throw the ball up to T. Higgins probably five times. He comes down with two or three of them. Uh, two amazing catches uh, last Friday night uh, against Clinton. It scores twice. And uh, uh, Middleton, they throw it up to him in the end zone a couple of times. And, uh, he, he ends up not – well, he ends up catching one up over top of everybody. and But he comes in and out of bounds. So they're running uh, flex bone. You know, I love the old flex bone. Uh, and and it, it it makes it hard to double cover them, makes it hard to double cover them. So we've got a we've got a work cut out for us there, and then you try and take away uh, Allison on the dive and Dunbar, you know, on the keep. Uh, very talented. One of the few teams we will play this year that has a kicker uh, that will rival Landon Sayers. Uh, he kicked all but one kickoff in the end zone, barely missed a 49 yarder and then hit one from short range. So he's an amazing leg also. Defensively, they only list three returning starters, but man, they're, they run, man. They, they're faster in small town gossip. Uh, they got guys that can run to that football. Uh, Alex Alcorn, an all-state defensive tackle last year. Matt Warmbrod, a six foot three, 215 pound linebacker. Chase Kimbrough, small outside linebacker, runs that ball like crazy. Uh, Gavin Warrington, a free safety, just amazing speed. Devon Middleton, I would assume that, uh, you know, he's probably in the uh, same Middleton group of uh, folks. He appears to have that kind of athletic ability. And a young man we don't know a lot about because we didn't play him last year. But, uh, you know, I, I, I keep up. Uh, Manukian, he's a linebacker that made 155 tackles last year. He did not play against Clinton, so I really don't know a whole lot about him right now. But I'm betting that he's got the same kind of speed as those other guys over there. So quite a challenge for us Friday night to open up at J. Fred Johnson Stadium. Uh, the kind of challenge that we like to have. Uh, uh, the kind of challenge that you know we think is going to make the Indians better. Going down memory lane, Oak Ridge back in the day. Went down and called a game one night, guy by the name of Adonis Johnson. I'll never forget, it's one of the top five all <laughs> times for me. That guy put on a show that night, 240, I believe 245 no, no. yards. 282 yards. 282. 282. I don't know what 245, but 282. Yeah, right. he ran uh, second half. I think we gave it to him about every time. And uh, I remember him coming off the field and the whole stand standing up and cheering. And somebody on the sideline said, man, ain't that something them cheering for you? He said, oh, man, they ain't cheering for me. They're cheering for us. And Adonis, Adonis. Uh, 
man, and we, I, we, we got to the edge of town. We couldn't decide which way to go. And I said, bus driver, whatever Adonis says, you go ahead and just go that way. <laughs> uh, young man that's uh, spent time in the Air Force and out in Arizona now and raising a family and uh, dropped by to see us there in March. Great to see him. 282. The old boy towed to the mail that night. A lot of great memories. There'll be memories again coming up this weekend, too, at J. Fred Johnson Stadium. Coach Keys for Dobbins Minute to get a big win over Oak Ridge. Well, I think it's going to be hard. I don't I don't know that either kicker will have a kick return. Um, so maybe that neutralizes each other. But obviously, you got to play assignment football. If they're going to run triple option, you got to be able to take away their speed on a rocket sweep. Uh, and you got to keep them, hopefully, from getting too many big passes over your head. Uh, it does not have to be a great pass for them to go up and get it. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, offensively, I think it's important that we're consistent running the football uh, and controlling the clock. You know, you watch their game the first quarter with Clinton. They both have one drive. They neither one of them score, uh, but it takes the whole first quarter. So we got to do a good job controlling the football and not give them too many opportunities to put it up to uh, uh, T. Higgins and Darrell Middleton. And before and after the game, be sure and stop by your Biggie's Clam Bar. Again, all weekend long, they're open. Of course, we mentioned the bands on Friday and Saturday, the Great Disaster Band on Friday, and the Well Dogs on Saturday. And don't forget on Tuesdays, two for one, burgers, pizza, chicken sandwiches here at, at Biggie's Clam Bar on Stone Drive here in Kingsport. We certainly appreciate them allowing us to come in and do this each and every Tuesday. We'll be here every Tuesday at 7. You can stop by and enjoy a dinner with us, hang out with us. Again, on Tuesdays, two for one. Burgers, pizza, and chicken sandwiches. And, again, as we said, we will put this uh, up and ready to go Wednesdays at noon. Just go to YouTube and, and type in Tom Taylor Sports, and you'll be able to watch the uh, Graham Clark Coaches Show. Coach, week number two, under under our belts, my friend. Let's Home get ready for the for right now, you know, for right now, I'm semi-intelligent. At one, you know, and hopefully we can stay that way for a while. Come come join us for the program here at Biggie's. Yeah. Great food. I'm, you'll be glad you did. Absolutely. It is great food. And the uh, Biggie Burger, that'll set you free. That's some great, great food. The ground chuck hamburger, big and thick. Had a little mater on it and some cheese, provolone cheese, and sweet tater fries and a, a, some sweet tea. Make a bulldog break his chain. It's good. I may have to go get one right now. <laughs> <laughs> that'll wrap it up. Again, our other sponsors, thanks to Hayworth Tire, Orthopedics of Kingsport, Southern Dwelling with Diane Hills, and also Cross Country, More Than a Mortgage, our buddy Russell Street. So for Coach Clark and also for our producer, Robert Kale, this is Tom Taylor again. Join us again next week. Again, this show goes up at noon on Wednesdays on YouTube. YouTube, just type in Tom Taylor Sports, and there will be. And again, over 100 views just last week. Just getting started every Tuesday we do this. And Coach, good luck to you, and roll tribe. Roll tribe, as always, Tom. You got it. And we will see you again next week, Wednesday at noon, another taping next Tuesday night. And so for Coach Clark, Robert Kale, and all the folks here at Big East, remember, win or lose, be a good sport. I'm your host, Tom Taylor, and I say so long, everybody.